Hello and welcome to the Business Lounge and today I'm joined by Rob Worrell from the Insurance Partnership in Hull. They're actually a company that's grown out of Hull and been quite successful I believe. Welcome Rob. Welcome and thank you for understating our achievements. I'm quite <laughs> successful but uh, our um, best days are ahead of us I'm sure. No, 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 no. So t tell me about your business then Rob because there's many people out there that maybe won't know what you are, who you are. How long have you been established now? We set up on the 1st of September in 1993 and you, know, you always remember these sort of starts of adventures very, very well. It's a bit like first girlfriend, first car. But there were, there were four people, great, great friends, all in partnership, 25% each. And we had one and a half full-time staff um, and both those ladies only very recently retired from the business. Uh, in 17 years, we've gone from five and a half people doing general insurance to 180 people doing insurance broking, risk management, um, financial services, commercial finance, all with the sort of um, the mantra of being strongly independent as the cornerstone of what we do. So everything we do we do it for clients. You know. Was it always your vision though to be that big? So when the four no. of you just set up in business, what, what, no. what was it that you wanted then? In truth, we wanted to satisfy the base instinct of every man to feed his family. You know, we didn't have visions of grandeur or, or size. We had an immediate need to feed ourselves and we were all good brokers. You know, and I think that's part of the journey really that um, years on, we probably over the last five to seven years have started to try and become decent business people, decent entrepreneurs, having always been very good at insurance broking. So we had to feed our families and we had to make sure the clients that had supported us in previous companies weren't left in the cold without continuity and support. So when did Rob Worrell and his team go from being insurance experts to really focusing on business and growing the business? I think I, I would say six to seven years ago, I, you know, I think we did 10 years of organically building our business, but it got bigger purely because we were good at what we did. So you won more clients, you got busier, you took on more staff, and you just kept to the same basic premise and, and everything else. But um, we started to grow and growing's great, but you get growing pains, don't you? So we had to sort of really raise our game and try and understand why the infrastructure was creaking and why, you know, that just being good at insurance didn't necessarily mean you were a good employer. It didn't necessarily mean that you could source talent, that you had a brand or a reputation that was, you know, to sort of um, to, to be sought after. So we took on, we had our first experiment with a non-exec director. Um, who came from a firm of chartered accountants and he sort of sat and gave some f sort of fiscal guidance and that was brilliant because we started to understand money you know understand that paper profit had obviously has a place but nothing as uh, important as making sure the cash is there to deal with day-to-day -day transactions to understand our creditor profile our debtor book and everything else so we, we, we started there and then I think we developed again by some three years after that, we took on another non-exec director who had a real sense of corporate governance. You know, he brought order to the board, very specific, who's doing what, when, timelines, and of course, you know, sort of penalties for, for not doing what we said we'd do in a time scale. So, you know, I, I think that's when we decided that there was the opportunity for a very good business and that that business if the principles of client delivery were right, could be replicated in other cities and potentially in other countries. So at the moment, we went from a Hull office to open a York office. From a York office, we opened up um, in the Midlands, um, where we now have two, two offices also. We then moved into Scotland. Um, we've opened up a, a corporate risk centre now in Leeds. And at the same time, we've got a, a very growing financial services business that occupies our founding premises on, on Beverly Road in Hulls. But the insurance partnership I, I believe in, and I can also, I'm in a fortunate position as Group MD that I can shape, I can shape the delivery. So, um, you know, 
if you do something right for the right reason at the right time in the right way, you tend to get the right result. Yeah. And people say, oh, that's successful selling. Well, if you break it all down, make a promise, take somebody's money, deliver on the promise, get to know them better as time goes on, gain trust, deserve the trust, repeat the process, do the right thing in the right way at the right time. Simple men's work, really. Mm. And I'm a simple man, and but I stick to the basics. Not really quite as simple as that, I don't think it is, but I'd say to your point. Do it right, do it once. Yeah. Saves right. a lot of time, doesn't it? So, we've talked about all the good things there, Rob. Have any, any bad things that have happened? Because, you know, when I talk oh, to people yeah. about people getting interviewed, they always say, well, yeah, it's all well and good hearing about the good stories because we can read the Donald Trump books that say this went right and that went right. Uh, what, what people like to see is, is that give us an example of something that went wrong and how you got out of it because that's what people want to hear. We place currently in excess of 40 million of clients premium into the market. We have over 100 million of client funds under management. Yeah. At any one time, even now, I'm sure I've got personal guarantees to insurance companies and everything else. So, you know, don't be fooled. Every day is a blooming gamble for me. You know, and the, and the bigger the business, it isn't the greater the security, it's potentially the bigger the exposure. Yeah. So, you know, things I've done wrong, you know, I pride myself in making mistakes because I pride myself in making decisions. And I think, but I'm pleased to say that for all the ones I've got wrong, which have been numerous, they've been far outweighed by the ones I've got right. I've, I've selected poor people, usually for the right reasons, because you respond to, you grow in, staff that you really care about are working too hard. So, oh God, so you put a bum on a seat and find they're not the right quality and it catches you up and, you know, so I've had recruitment issues that I've got wrong and I've had to sit back and really think about how we recruit people and how we try and promote from within and like build our own academy of talent coming through the business. I've over-promoted people. I've broken away from core once or twice too often. You know, I like to push our range of services um, because I, I want to create a brand that clients trust and believe in. But sometimes you, you can overstep what is your core role, which is I'm an insurance broker. And, and so your skill set's not attuned to every single diversification that's maybe thrown at you. But um, I think the way to manage bad decisions is what we're doing now. Mug a tea, have a chat with your peer group, whether it be your board, should always be your board, but whether it be then non-exec directors, whether it be your peer group businessmen, I could ring you up, talk through an idea. But don't look what a deal can do for you. Look at how badly you're going to be hurt from that deal going completely wrong and what your exit strategy is going to be. Mm. How do you cap your liability to that deal? And I think if you, you don't have to be a merchant of doom because I'm an inherently positive person, but I now don't get carried away with the, this time next year, Rodney, will be millionaires. Yeah, yeah. I'll more look at, right, if we de commit X amount of people, X amount of capital, X amount of money, and if it doesn't go right, and I'm not suggesting it won't go right, but if it doesn't, how badly is our reputation affected? When do we get our money back? Can we get it back? What harm does it do? You know, and all these things I now consider, but probably when I was a bit younger and after, I would just you know, go in and get into situations that pure instinct would get me out of, but at what cost I could never really quantify. So now I'm a bit more considered about going into deals, and I tend to recommend that as a... If I was recommending anything to people starting up, it was don't suppress your instinct, but consider what could go wrong. Yeah. So always look at the downside as well. I think you've got to. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, I think you've got you're to. absolutely right there. So it talks about the ups, it talks about the downs, and uh, so where do you see the insurance partnership then in the next five years? You talked about that you're going to, I think it was seven you said actually, that do you see anything there more international then? I see, you know when you, sometimes your staff come to you, don't you? And I don't like calling staff staff or workers because your colleagues, your friends, what, what, however you like to be, but when your team come to you, and sometimes you have that awful conversation because you're the ultimate employer and they say, oh, I'm getting itchy feet. 
And I think they think it's unique to them, you know, and you've got to try and show that you're going to continue to deliver opportunities in your business. You're going to continue to um, provide challenges, both financial and intellectual and whatever. I think they think it's different for us, that we don't feel that, you know, because you're the MD, so everything's OK for you. But, but I get itchy feet. You know, I think to myself, well, what have I learned this year? What did I learn last year? Well, if I kept on learning and I eradicated some mistakes, I must be able to play on a bigger stage than I am on at the minute. And so, you know, I, I look at every year and I think, well, this is a time to progress a bit. I need it for my personal development. Pro rata, everybody in our team needs it for their personal development. And, and so I do see a bigger business, a bigger stage on which to play, to perform our, uh, our, our art, if you like. Um, and that will take us elsewhere in the UK, and I'm sure it'll take us abroad, for which we already represent a number of clients with global interests anyway, so it's a natural extension of that. Well, that's been fantastic, isn't it? It's been really interesting to see how the business has grown from small uh, to, to what it is now, and I hope that continues. I know it will. With you. Well, since everything I've got to say, and I know we're on the camera, but since meeting you, everything's got better. <laughs> Thank you very much. Rob, always a pleasure. Never a chore. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you.